Hey, Marin here from Indie Birth with our new book, Indie Birth, A Story of Radical Birth Love. We had such a fun time meeting all kinds of women in the Los Angeles area this past weekend. Uh, I'm back home in Sedona, but we had a lot of fun. And we had a lot of fun reading from our book, which we never have before. Uh, so it's definitely more fun to read for real people that are, you know, in the same room. But I thought I would read a couple of excerpts from our new book in hopes that you would add this to your birth collection and most importantly, then pass it on. Have it be part of your own offerings in your community. Um, so yeah, this book was written not long ago, you know, a year ago at most. And it took us probably longer to get it all together and published and all of that than it actually took for us to write it. So if you're wondering what it's about, um, again, I am going to read a couple of excerpts here, but it is broken up into parts. So the first part is about indie birth and how that all began, my own journey through licensing as a midwife, how Margot and I met, uh, our early days together, and then it kind of moves through into our current vision for birth, for midwifery, and we have lots of birth stories intertwined. So we each have some of our own birth stories, and we were blessed to be able to share some of other women that we have served in the book as well. So the book's gotten great feedback. Uh, I don't think Margot or I would probably call ourselves authors in any other sense, but this is a pretty sincere and transparent offering here in book form, and I think that's what people like about it. So just wanted to give you a taste today so that you could get your own copy, uh, the address, the website address to buy your own copy, and we do ship anywhere in the world with the hard copy, is indiebirth.org forward slash book. Super easy. So get yourself a copy. Um, if you don't want to pay for shipping, then you can get an ebook copy and read that like right now. Uh, but hard copies are great. You know, I think with all the social media and all the internet stuff, people still like a solid book. I know I do. So I think it's great to have, you know, actual pages to touch. There's lots of pretty photos, color birth photos in the book. Uh, kids love to page through it. So I really, of course, am hoping that people out there will like what they hear and or just want to support us and or just want to add another cool book to their collection. Uh, there's not so many books, you know, in this vein, so to speak. So once again, Indie Birth, a story of radical birth love. I'm going to take a couple minutes here and read random excerpts that I come across. So feel free to tune in. Um, I'll probably also repost this if you have to go and just pretend like we're all sitting in the same room together. That's what I hope. Uh, Margo and I both wrote this book. I think that was a given, but you may not know that. Uh, it's not my book, it's our book. And so I'll be reading excerpts that either of us wrote and I'll tell you who wrote what before I read it. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to start with an excerpt called Freedom that I wrote and then probably move on to something Margot wrote. Uh, kind of skip around. Again, if you're just joining us, the book is broken up into sections and I think has a nice flow. So you'll have to check it out for yourself. Obviously, I'm not gonna read the whole book here, just a couple sections. So Freedom. Many years ago, my new apprentice at the time, Margot, asked me to sum up indie birth in one word. Hmm, one word. I thought about it and brainstormed a bit. As usual, it came back to a feeling for me. The feeling, the sensation was crystal clear. I want women to feel free. I want them to feel freedom in making the right birth choices for them. I want them to feel no compromise and no obligation to anyone else or anything. I want them to spread their wings and soar. Freedom in birth feels like you are in charge, that you care the most about you and your baby. That is my goal and the goal of any birth, to promote and stand for birth freedom. However, we know too that it isn't that easy. 
Freedom and birth isn't just out there on the corner for you to go buy. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Freedom and birth is seemingly hard to find, lurking behind fear and control and money and power. It takes a lot to wade in and pass these other things which are cultural staples. I'm not proposing an easy solution to finding one's freedom and birth or even in life. It's hard. I'd say it stems from that deep knowing that we are free. We find that part of ourselves that has always known freedom and never known restraint, never known anyone else's opinions or ideas on ourselves or what we should do, and we tune in there. I think that has been, to me, the greatest use of my podcast that I see and I'm given feedback on. Women and families listen, and they reconnect with this ancient knowledge. So many go on to have births that change their lives, whether they are unassisted births or midwife attended births. Hearing someone else speak what they consider truth hits me in the heart. I have gotten literally hundreds of emails attesting to this simple fact, and this was, as I said, never the motivation for the podcast initially. In a lot of ways, the podcast started so that I could hear myself talk. I used it as a way, and still do, to get clear to hear what rings true for me, and other people have simply done the same with it. As human beings, we are inherently free. Birth is a natural, normal human process. It is not a disease, and rarely is it a medical event. We should be as free to birth as we are to go eat whatever food we choose. We have lost the connection with the simplicity, and as a result, many people keep themselves in chains of their own accord, They have it written in their cells as a result of trauma and or misinformation that birth is dangerous and to be feared. It is taking so much to reclaim what is ours. When you view it like this, there is no us in them. We aren't able to blame the doctors or the hospitals or anyone really for what's happened. Women in particular have relinquished their birthing freedom and the chips have fallen where they would. It's true. Connecting women with their ancient ancestry is a primary mission of any birth. Of course, we try to accomplish this in all kinds of ways, both new and old, so we can reach more people. The people we reach are ready to hear these things. They are ready to reclaim their freedom. And this is where change happens. So, excerpt number one from Indie Birth, a story of radical birth love. IndieBirth.org forward slash book. We'd love if you got a copy for your community after you read it first, of course. Let's see, what else is readable? Let's find something of Margot's. I feel like we have definitely different styles of writing. I think that's refreshing, honestly. Might be boring if we didn't. Um, Let's see, maybe I'll read the section Margot read at our Um, yeah, the link actually is in the bio, unless Margot changed it this morning, but I don't think she did. Indiebirth.org forward slash book. Okay, Margot wrote this section. She's got a great uh, voice in writing, much funnier than mine, which is well appreciated. Uh, So her section is called Rebel, and this is only, you know, one page out of 200 in our book. So Rebel by Margot. One of my favorite bands growing up was Green Day, and I can remember spending hours in my bedroom listening to them on what I thought was a very grown-up 3D CD changer with stereo. She's a rebel. She's a saint. She's the salt of the earth, and she's dangerous. I was a free thinker in a closed-minded small town in Arizona. When I was 16, the Rotary Club invited me to accept a student award of some sort and to give a speech. I made an anti-Iraq war plea and closed with a Thich Nhat Hanh quote, and I got booed by the mayor of my town, along with some lawyers, judges, and other well-to-do folks. I also spent some time in detention for A, reading Pablo Neruda during math class, which I had an A in anyways, which was very irritating to my teacher, and B, violating the no-hat policy at my school and sporting a rainbow beanie my mom had crocheted for me. On a less adorable note, by the time I got to the end of high school, I was regularly getting called a bitch and a feminazi by many of the boys in my honors class that I had grown up alongside. Considering how tame my ideology was at that point, I can only imagine what they might think of me now. 
my Facebook perusing would lead me to believe that some of them have come around, thankfully. Through college, I clarified and expanded my beliefs. I got involved in and eventually took on leadership roles in a variety of social justice organizations. I really found my groove when I was exposed to the concept of direct action and the larger tenets of anarchist activism. I was so tired of talking about the problems and wanted to be a part of the solution. I was already a feminist in a women's and gender studies program, but I became one of the radicals of my already fringe program. I had never pictured myself as an anarchist. Aren't they scary, property-destructive lunatics in black masks? It turns out they are some of the smartest, fiercest, most loving people I know, and I owe so much to the people that taught me and took me in, especially the incredible indigenous activists in Flagstaff, Arizona, who were and are ceaselessly creative, determined, and downright fun. Many of my contributions to Indie Burst strategy, content, and jaw de vivre are owed to the skills and confidence I gained in those formative years with those inspiring people. I was encouraged to question and rethink everything. I asked and was asked very uncomfortable questions and challenged beliefs that I had previously thought unquestionable. Why do we expect the government to provide anything for us? Are we not capable of supporting ourselves? If not alone, at least in strong, vibrant, healthy communities. There were people in my circles that were talking about reclaiming healthcare, learning about herbs, and practicing radical love and community care by sharing free food through groups like Food Not Bombs, which is one of the places where I got to know my now partner and father of my children. This all sounds very familiar, I bet. Very recently, I made a giant pot of kitchery to share with a group of pregnant women at one of my free events called Nourish Your Natural Pregnancy. A memory that bubbles to the surface when I think about what it means to me to be a rebel and for Indie Birth as a rebel group, I remember being at a primitivist Skillshare in Colorado about six months before starting my midwifery apprenticeship. I was sitting with a group of mostly women, some were nude if memory serves me, on a big flat rock next to a river, and we talked about how to chart our cycles and how to use that information to prevent pregnancy. I had already been charting for a few months, but it was the first time I was able to talk about it with anyone else in person. I felt so obviously in the right place with the right people and talking about the right thing, women's health. This is where I was meant to be, and this was the work I was meant to do. I just didn't know that was possible yet. I wasn't leading the discussion on the rock, but realized I could have been since I had studied the heck out of taking charge of your fertility. Rejecting birth control pills was a big turning point in my life. In my medical records, the jerk of a nurse noted that I had very set ideas and notions about what I was willing to do in regards to birth control and what it had done to my body. Spoiler, spoiler alert, I still do. So a mixture of fertility charting and dabbling in herbs for my long-standing blood pressure issues is what sparked my interest in natural health and would be the foundation for my future love of midwifery. I love the idea that I could heal myself and that I could prevent pregnancy completely on my own. I felt like I could do anything if I dug deep enough, learned from those who had paved the way, listened to the other rebels, and owned my own process. I've always loved proving people wrong about the limits of our own abilities. I have always enjoyed bucking the system when it didn't serve me, and I love pointing out stupid, non-effective approaches to getting shit done. Nothing brings me more joy than finding creative solutions to complex problems, especially if it disrupts the status quo in the process. So that's an excerpt by Margot from our new book, Indie Birth, A Story of Radical Birth Love, now available on our website as an ebook or hard copy, indiebirth.org forward slash book. Uh, we had a book reading in the Los Angeles area just a couple days ago. So now that I'm home, I thought I would try to duplicate a similar thing here on Instagram. And you can listen as you'd like and hopefully just order the book and read the whole thing for yourself. Uh, we've got lots of great reviews. Most people that have let us know how they liked it said they couldn't put it down. And if you're a birth nerd, uh, I, I imagine that is true because there's lots of fun birth stories in here combined with our radical view on things 
like unregulated midwifery. free. Uh, I think I'll read one more section if you will stick around, or if not, that's cool too. Uh, you can always go back and watch this in our stories. Uh, let's see, any questions people have, feel free to post. Uh, if not, I will find a shortish, short-ish section here. None of it looks very short when you're faced with it. Okay, here's a short-ish section that I wrote uh, called Birth as a Human Right. There are no coincidences, so as I am writing this section, it also comes across my computer screen firsthand how our human rights are at stake with the prosecution and persecution of midwives around the world. A fundraising campaign for a Canadian sister midwife has just been posted on social media, and my heart, as always, goes out to her and the bigger collective of women that will suffer. When the government, the patriarchy, whatever you want to call it, gets involved and decides who and where a woman must or must not birth, we all pay a deep price. This is non-negotiable for me, and I think at the core of being a human being, it is non-negotiable for all of us. On the outside, many humans seek to control and overpower others, but that is not our true nature. I believe our true nature is to not interfere in the lives of others and to remember that there is a place in every person that knows the best for themselves. On a more superficial level, the prosecution of midwives seems to happen nearly every week. Midwives are not perfect people, just as doctors are not, but the huge elephant in the room is this. Doctors are rarely personally responsible for a bad outcome. No one faults a doctor and rarely does anything result, even something as minor as malpractice. So how can we criminally charge midwives for similar outcomes? It makes no sense. We only do because there is different treatment towards people that do not subscribe to mainstream beliefs. We can argue over whether a prosecuted midwife did it right but first of all, if we are not physically present, we cannot accurately comment. That's called gossip. And really, it's not even helpful to compare doctor versus midwife. That too is so old paradigm. We are in the here and now, and women are losing their birthing rights. I don't see it as a midwife problem. We don't need to save midwifery, but we need to have women care about saving themselves. Maybe midwifery as we know it will come and go. Midwives will constantly be on the ins, then the outs with the established power. My only hope and idea is that women won't allow themselves to be controlled. I'm not sure that this will happen in my lifetime, but I have to try. I have to hope that my daughters will care more than my generation does, and that change will happen because they insist on creating what they see. It certainly is possible that normal physiological birth as it's meant to be becomes obsolete in centuries to come. I believe we should all care about that. It's not some fringe theory either. The well-known and loved doctor and author, Michelle Odant, writes about that in his books, Childbirth and the Evolution of Homo Sapiens and Do We Need Midwives? From a more technical perspective, he paints a picture of physically being unable to birth if current trends continue. It certainly is disturbing and interesting to think about. I'd add, of course, that because birth is not just physical, we have a lot more at stake as well than just losing physical vaginal birth. We risk losing our connection with ourselves and our feminine power permanently. For a better or worse, I think this theory is actually something that more people can understand as opposed to convincing someone of the benefits of home birth. We should all care about the preservation and quality of existence of our species. So that concludes three short readings from our book. Indie Birth, A Story of Radical Birth Love. Thanks for tuning in here. And if you'd like to get a copy of the book, we'd love that. We want more communities to be reading this and discussing it and arguing over it and bonding over it. That would be uh, such a fantastic result of the time we've spent putting into this book. We're all here, obviously, on social media. You know, we're connected in many more interesting ways than people ever were in the past. However, I think there's still something good old fashioned and solid about reading printed words on a page. 
Uh, so that is why we wrote this book. And again, we hope you'll read it. That's it for me here in Sedona today. IndieBirth.org forward slash book. The link is also in our bio. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening to my impromptu book reading.